The Hand is a physical representation of the themes. Uh, the film is about connections, true ones and false ones, and the hand is a false connection. Yeah. And Mia wanting to do the hand in this scene is, you know, she wants to connect to something, to feel something. She sees her friend connecting with her love interest. She wants to feel something. Let's do the hand and connect to some. Look, the hands, yeah, yeah. The hands are a big motif in the film. There's a lot of hand shots. Look at the hand fetish you have, there was a lot. Directed by former YouTubers, I was expecting this film's reception to be a lot more mixed upon release, but with the hype Talk To Me was getting, I couldn't help but be drawn in, and I can say for certain that for the first time in a long time, it was well worth the hype and attention it garnered. Talk To Me is my surprise film of the year so far, and it had the A24 seal of approval, so I had high hopes going in, but was genuinely shocked by how much this film had to say about the human condition, despite the main draw being the spirits and ensuing possession that drives the plot. From its outset, the film wants you to know just how disconnected the characters are from each other. When the first possessee is clearly having some sort of mental episode, Rather than helping him, the teenagers at this party all pull out their phones and start recording, expecting some type of outburst. They only come to their senses after the possessee violently stabs his brother and subsequently himself. That same theme of disconnection continues into the very next scene as our main character Mia has to have her name called several times over in order to respond to her father who she's developed a rocky relationship with since the tragic death of her mother due to an accidental overdose of sleeping pills. Two years later and she's never really been able to cope with this loss and as a result she forms even stronger bonds with her best friend Jade and her family, particularly with Jade's little brother Riley almost becoming a big sister to him in her own right. One night when picking him up, the two spot an injured kangaroo who had been hit by a car and is clearly suffering. The ethical thing to do would be to put it out of its misery, which Mia almost does, but at the last minute, she hesitates and stops, wanting to spare herself of any additional fuel that would contribute to the pain she still carries. In an attempt to shield herself from reconciling with what just happened, Mia pressures Jade into attending a party to see if her rumored magical hand can really make you trip balls and see things, or if it's just a big hoax. Mia forcing herself to socialize and return to normalcy rather than working through her shit proves overall to be more damaging than anything else. Taking the hand and speaking the titular words, talk to me, allows her to see a spirit from the other side and sends her into a state of euphoria as the spirit takes control of her body with a vigorous awareness at its temporary humanity. <laughs> Just like at the beginning of the film, these teens are so disconnected from the reality right in front of them that their focus is on getting good footage for their Instagram stories rather than the blatantly obvious that something is clearly wrong with Mia. Going slightly over the 90 second time limit not only allows these spirits to fester within her, but implant the desire for that aforementioned euphoric feeling of peace within her. Mia's past drug usage is alluded to throughout the film, and this hand thing could just be a substitute for her previous damaging coping mechanisms. With everyone seeming to have a great time, Riley wants to join in on the fun but is repeatedly shut down by his sister, only for her authority to be undermined by Mia, whose kinship with Riley and desperation to feel accepted overrides her common sense and she lets him use the hand. Once the spirits enter and take the wheel, it becomes painfully obvious to Mia that the spirit is that of her deceased mother. Overcome with emotion, she pleads with the others not to break the connection and takes Riley over the 90 second mark to morbid consequences. The film then takes a hard turn as the spirits within Riley suddenly make him violently thrash about and have Riley mutilate himself, landing him in the hospital. Toward the back end of this episode, as everyone is scrambling to help Riley, Mia can only walk away, almost as if to absolve herself of any responsibility before the weight of that decision comes crashing down on her. This idea is illustrated by her two Beavis and Butthead friends arguing in the background about getting their story straight prior to the inevitable arrival of the paramedics and police, more concerned with themselves than the well-being of this prepubescent boy. 
After trying to visit Riley in the hospital, the warmth that Mia once felt from Jade and her mother has been replaced with a cold callousness as they're too emotionally volatile to see Mia as anything more than the direct cause of Riley's hospitalization. At this point, the spirits still lingering within Mia have a certain influence over her as seen when her father tries to comfort and connect with her emotionally and she can't help but to question the circumstances of her mother's death after being told by her mother's spirit that the overdose was indeed accidental and that anything said otherwise by her father was an outright lie. This was really sold to me during the scene where Mia invites over her ex-boyfriend to sleep at her house because she doesn't want to be alone and while a lesser film may have predictably made this moment romantic or even sexual, Talk To Me uses it to convey just how desperate Mia is to connect with someone with something as simple as barely grazing his leg, visibly meaning so much to her. At least it's not sexual until he wakes up after a foot fetish phantom hijacks Mia's body through spirit shenanigans, but I digress. When it's discovered that Riley's soul is being tortured in a state of limbo while the spirits still have him, she's forced to make the same decision she did with that kangaroo on the highway. Should she kill him and put him out of his misery? Or should she leave him to suffer indefinitely to keep herself from having to bear that responsibility and ultimately that pain? And with a malfeasant nudge from her own parasitic spirits, she comes to the conclusion that Riley has to die. Similar to how the spirits are manipulating her, she manipulates Jade and her mother away from Riley in order to do what she has to do. Taking him to a busy highway in a wheelchair, in her mind all she has to do is give him a little push and Riley's nightmare will be over. But that same hesitancy she showed with the dying kangaroo comes back around and she suddenly finds herself unsure of her actions. The spirits are pushing hard now and with something having to give, the next shot cuts to a thud on the hood of a car where we subsequently see Mia has jumped to her presumed death. There is some ambiguity to whether or not Jade pushed Mia in a desperate attempt to save Riley, but it'd be extremely out of character and thematically irrelevant for her to have done so. Mia stands up and is teleported to the hospital seemingly sometime in the future where it quickly becomes evident that she is in fact dead and gone. Surrounded by darkness, the only light she can see is illuminated by a candle and an outstretched hand beckoning her to take it. With this being the only connection she has to her remaining humanity, she takes it and the audience is made morbidly aware that she's now one of the spirits trapped within the hand. Mia was living as an emotionally disembodied ghost and as a result, now she's an actual ghost. Now it's too late for her to move on, forever resigned to the same fate she had when she was alive, desperate for touch and longing for human connection. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, apparently they already greenlit a sequel, so maybe we can see Ghost Mia try to recover her humanity, or maybe she can take on a more antagonistic role as a villain or something, I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see from a Talk To Me sequel, and I guess we'll find out when it comes out. I'm Josh Fleeks, till next time, y'all be easy.